Well, a lot of people that aren't exposed to domestic violence are very shocked to find out that, uh, you know, this goes on. I grew up in a domestically violent home. You know, I you envy people that grow up in this happy household that their mom and dad got along and they were there hugging all the time and it was wonderful. When I was coming home from school as a youngster and I saw my dad's car in front of the house, I went to a friend's house. I connected my dad being there with fear. My dad would yell and, and, and bang things and, you know, throw food against the wall and just what my mom had to endure while he was there. I mean, he, my dad used to come home at night at maybe three or four in the morning and wake her up to cook for the, for the people that he brought home to play cards. I never saw him physically abuse my mom, but I saw evidence that uh, evidently that was taking place. There's no worse emotion, I think, than fear. And you hear yelling through the walls, and uh, it's a helpless feeling. I was never abused, but the fear that it created in my life is something that, uh, that I'll never forget. I was a very nervous child. I was very guarded. I used to admire the youngsters who used to raise their hand and, you know, it was characterized as a silly question, but they had the courage to do that. I didn't have the courage to do that. Always felt very sensitive about my feelings and was uh, just a little embarrassed to share them with anybody, thinking I was the only one that had these problems. Because at the time, I, I certainly didn't recognize the, the connection between domestic violence and and my, my feeling of inadequacy. I just felt secure playing baseball. I, I was pretty successful doing it. That was a place I could go hide. Uh, a lot of times when I went through my, my childhood, I felt I was alone in feeling this way. Friends that I grew up with you know, said, Joe, I, I never knew this about you. And if I had known, or if I had a Margaret's place to go to, it, it would have been easier for me because I didn't have to carry this burden all by myself. When we first started the Safe at Home Foundation, we, were, we went into a middle school, and I explained that I grew up in this violent home, and my dad was abusive to my mom, and I looked up, and there were probably six or eight youngsters that were just shaking their head like this, evidently because they were experiencing the same thing. If the youngsters understand that the way to treat people is the way you want to be treated, that violence, control, any kind of verbal abuse is wrong, we could change things. Growing up, I thought my mom's job was to be there for me. You know, I come home from school, uh, she was there. I come home from playing ball, she was there. There was food on the table, there was a hug, there was warmness. I just felt that I, I wanted other children to benefit from what I benefited from with my mom. My mom's name was Margaret. And we created Margaret's Place. We provide a counselor, provide a safe haven if that child wants to go into this room and read a book or play a game. Now I'm very proud to say we have 10 Margaret's Places. The uh, Community Players Program is a, a program where we train school teachers, lawyers, medical staff, police officers. So if they are confronted with domestic violence, that they know how to handle it. And I think what we want to get across, among other things, is the fact that you're not alone. A lot of people equate uh, making a lot of money with success. To me, success is, is being able to be there for your children, having them grow up with terrific self-esteem, feeling good about themselves, and being open. I have a young uh, daughter. Uh, she's 10 years old. Best thing I can experience with her is to know that she loves coming home every day. Whatever we can do as a society to make their life safe, it's our obligation to do that, and I, I think that's what spells success. There's a place I